is for anyone that is working on Popper's Cello Etude number 19. Today I'll be speaking about 10 ways you can practice this etude, and it's particularly for the Texan cellist that is working on this etude for the 2024 2025 All State Orchestra auditions. So, this one's for you. I'm Jeanette Stenson. I am a cellist, cello teacher, and audition coach. You can find me at jscellist or jscellist.com. Let's get right into it. The first way I want you to practice this etude is get your E flat major scale and arpeggios out. I like to do the E flat major scale with no open strings. So starting in extended lower second. I think the thumb arpeggio here is important when you put your second finger down. Over. You're sliding up on the thumb. And then second finger goes down, thumb goes over. the D and the A, the thumb can stay. Third finger on the top. Shift the thumb. Second practice this make sure you're practicing efficiently okay we need measure numbers written in the music go ahead and do that now you can pause it come back when you have that done I would bracket out the phrases the sections especially for this one you looking at measure 39 through 61 is just repeating the beginning I would bracket that out skip it for when you're learning the notes and then you don't have to practice the same notes twice it will save you a lot of time the third way to practice this Make sure we're practicing it on the string, detache, just for the notes. What a lot of people get wrong is when we see a piece that's all spiccato, off the string, short, staccato, marking, we want to play it off the string. Well, this does not translate with the tempo change, right? So what we need to do is play it on the string, detache. <laughs> This is going to translate, it's going to be the same arm motion that you'll use with your spiccato. So you can see it. It's the same. Okay, so don't waste your time or energy doing it off the string in an under tempo. I like to start when I'm just learning the notes, default 60 beats per minute per note. So it's slow, but we're Listening for intonation, getting our fingerings. You can work it up two clicks at a time, five clicks at a time, ten clicks at a time, however much time you have to get it all the way to at tempo. You can still do it on the string at tempo if you are still working on your spiccato separately. I would get all the notes ready first on the string and then switch to spiccato, increasing the tempo with metronome on. Fourth way I would practice this, play your double stops, like make double stops out of these notes um, to check your intonation, practice your thirds, fourths, sixths. So for the beginning, it would be play each of these together and then the fourth. And then this and so on. So you can go through the whole thing listening for these really ringing sounds on the double stops. Another good spot to do this in, is measure 11 in particularly. We have a lot of sixth. Okay, it's 10 
tempting to use a vibrato, but we'll try not to when we're working on intonation. Next, practice your shifts with ghost notes or guide notes. So a couple that stick out is measure one. We need to add a G ghost note, so E flat to B flat. And then you stop the bow, still slide, flop. So that's how we get our shift. The next one, you can also do it going down. So in measure two, this is a B flat to E flat. Same bowing down. So another one in measure twenty four. We're going from the G flat to the D flat. You can sort of add that B natural. It sounds weird because it's not in the key. But physically, we need to get to fifth position. You can go all the way down at measure 72, the G to the C. And add that E flat to get back to the C. And then next, E flat. to that D. Okay, next. E, B flat to E flat. Add an F. The next, I would say, accent your string crossings, particularly the up bows. So you'll find this a lot in the measure 12 section and measure 20 section. So we need to stop, roll across the D string, and then give it a little accent to practice that string crossing. Make sure it's efficient. And then the cool thing about this is this helps when we're doing it on the string. going spiccato you want to go lighter on the upper strings because it's the lighter smaller string so we want to keep that the same length of note next I would add in some rhythm practice this is a tried and true tool in your toolkit let's get creative you can do it in groups of threes or groups of twos um, with groups of threes, you have more options. You can do two longs, one short, or two short, one long. So for instance, and you can do this um, it under tempo and also at tempo. So it's, it's sort of a tongue twister for your brain, but also organizes your fingers and your bow hand. So it would be like long, short, long maybe. <laughs> Switch it up, short, long, short. You can also do it in twos, groups of twos, long, short, or short, long. So, short, long. And do this all on the string. It'll translate well once you start bouncing your bow. You can also do it other way. This will increase your velocity on those shifts. Next, map out your thumb. A couple spots are a little tricky in measure 30. We're going from the thumbs on the D and the A string. Jump that thumb over to the G when you land that first finger on the G, being the three finger. So that thumb ready before you need it. I would practice your thumb shifts, okay? So we have thirds or fourths lyrically on the same string. Measured 78. So we're going B flat to B flat to G 
And then finally to the E flat. Practice the shift on a slur so you can really hear the distance. So. This also, you can do it from measure 31. We have our D to B flat. Now we need to add the bow stroke. This is marked in spiccato. So the difference between a staccato marking and a spiccato marking, staccato is the dot marking that means have space in between each note. This is often heard just on the string. Now spiccato is when we add a bounce to the bow. So we have to work on letting the bow bounce in our hand and let the bow bounce by itself. It's gonna work the best at the tip. And start here and really drop it. We're not banging or we're not pressing each. It's just letting it drop and then letting the bow bounce on its own. Do it on the G string or the D string, whatever feels good. And then you can see how long you can let it bounce for. We wanna get that bow bouncing on its own. So you can see I'm just letting it balance on my thumb, sort of using the first finger, and everything else is released. Add a down bow motion, and bounce the bow this way. And then an up bow motion. And then we can add a number, one, two, three, four, five. See if you can count. And then when you have that, decrease the number to four. And then three, two, one. And then add the up bow motion as the rebound to the down. See if you can connect it. Now we want to bring that balance closer to the frog. So we can bring it in. Now you have your spiccato stroke. To translate it to this etude, we need to be in triplets, in threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So I think of it is a down bow and two bounces, one, and then up bow, two bounces. Okay, so once you get the duple, practice the triple. I'm thinking down, up, down, up. Put that all together, we have to practice our run-throughs, our performance practice. You'll have to practice playing all the way through, see how it goes, work up to your goal tempo. The recommended tempo is between 120 and 136. I would go ahead and practice on each increment, each one, 120, try 121, 122, etc., and see what feels best with your bow and your fingers and see what's working best and pick your goal tempo that way. <laughs> Thank you.
today like and subscribe if this was helpful and thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time bye